The world famous Raw report show was fine, but uh, you know both AEW and WWE of late, just the same lame distraction finishes. And like I said, hey, give me something a little better. Give me a more exciting distraction finish. These were very generic here on the show. It opened up with Finn and Priest coming down to the ring. And uh, they're there to celebrate, but there's no re and Dom yet. So Cody comes out, and he basically says, Last week, Priest, you gave me a low blow. And if you think that was a final shot, think again. And Priest said, Yes, I did do that. And also, I put you through that table over there, and that was pretty awesome. He says, You know, everyone keeps talking about your story. I don't even know what your story is. I think at this point, the story is that you failed. So Cody starts taking off his tie. He wants to fight. And Priest says, come on, dude. I got a match tonight with Jay. But you know what? If you want to fight, let's do it at Crown Jewel. So Cody accepts. But then he says, well, what do we do now? He wants to fight the two of them. And then out come Dom and Rhea. And right before they kill him, out comes Jay Uso. So we get this giant brawl, which, by the way, in the middle of, Jay and Rhea, they had eyes. And then J.D. McDonough runs down. And he chop blocks Cody's leg. Priest tells him to wrap a chair around the leg. They pilmonize the leg with another chair. Cody seriously injured. Again, this poor guy. And he is taken to the back. Then we had New Day and Alpha Academy, which was a fun match. And uh, Otis missed the Vader bomb. Kofi tags in Woods. They start hitting all of these near falls. And then finally, Otis gets a blind tag. But the New Day double teams him. Kofi hits a trouble in paradise. Woods hits the rope walk elbow. And they get the pin. New Day beats Alpha Academy. Tozawa is now a Alpha Academy trainee. He's out there trying to learn how to be Alpha, I guess. Becky did a promo about her match with Indy. And in the background, you could see this little figure sneak in. Pretty sure it was Nikki Cross. But... This person was actually so far away you could see who they were, but based on the colors of the gear, I uh, I think it might have been Nikki. This person says Alpha Academy push is done. It is not. If you watch the show, the story here is that all of the tag teams are like exchanging wins back and forth, and we're uh, we're building to something, and they are still pushing hard. The Chad Gable is working his way back to that match with uh, Gunther down the road. Seth meets with Rhea backstage. And apparently Seth just walks around backstage with these giant sunglasses on. So his new gimmick is he walks around with his sunglasses and he's acting all like a dingbat. And then uh, someone says something and he just takes, takes him off and gets serious. So he's walking around all goofy. And she says, you know, I think you need to uh, join the Judgment Day, essentially. And he says, and I quote, what would I want with you? Yuck. And she looks at him and says, you actually need me. You're the world champion. You could be the world champion. If you decide to join us, Priest could cash in on somebody else. We'd all hold gold. But without us, I don't know how you're going to accomplish having a title reign like Roman Reigns. Over a thousand days is a long time, and given how your back is, well, we could watch your back and have people acknowledge you. And he says, if there's one thing that I don't want, it is to be anything like Roman Reigns. And she says, well, that wasn't a no. And she leaves. Tonati's doing a deal where she's like the, the, she's CM Punk showing up at Impact. Hey, nice to see you guys. You know, anybody have any questions? Just come up and ask. I'd be happy to help. So, uh, Tegan was supposed to face, I always forget her name, uh, Chelsea. And, uh, Tegan was injured at NXT, so the match is not happening tonight. So it is going to be Natty apparently alone against the tag champs. We had Becky and Indy for the NXT women's title. Becky beat her with the disarmor, which according to Michael Cole is any arm bar. And it was fine. You know, Indy is Indy. And then uh, Lyra was in the front row. They had a stare down afterwards. They're facing off for the title on NXT tonight. Backstage, Candice gets attacked by Zia Lee, who still wants a match with... Uh, with Becky, and apparently Zai will actually get a match with uh, Candice next Monday. Nick Aldis shows up backstage. So on Friday SmackDown, Nick Aldis had Pierce escorted out of the building by security. 
So Nick Aldis shows up here, and man, this guy is such a great slimy character. He's in his suit, and he's being so sickeningly polite. He says, you know, we got off on the wrong foot. I take full responsibility for Friday. You can just chalk it up to rookie errors. I want to have healthy competition and do everything I can to prove that SmackDown is the number one show. But I don't want it to harm our relationship. So please, accept my apology. And Pierce is like, I don't know, man. I didn't like that. But I get it. Water under the bridge. And Pierce says, as a gesture of goodwill, you had me thrown out, so tonight I'm going to allow you to stick around. Watch how the A show is run. So he leaves and... Pierce demands more security for the next segment. So the next segment is a contract signing five-way. It is Nia, Zoe, Raquel, Shayna, and Rhea. But there is no Rhea. And Pierce says, well, let's let's have everybody sign now. And, uh, you know, I'll get I'll get Rhea's later. So they all sign, and then Rhea comes out. And, man, they are so... They are chanting Rhea's name. They're chanting for Mommy. They love her. And she says, I could beat all these women individually. But a five-way, man, this is a conspiracy. I know what you're doing here, but Pierce, when this is over, you're just going to have four less women in the division. And the crowd pops. They want to see her kill all these women. So then Nia grabs the mic and, you know, we mentioned yesterday, this current WWE crowd, they're not hijacking shows, but man, they do not like Nia Jax. And she gets the mic and they're just, they hate her and they're chanting something I can't even make out. But she's being annoying, and then finally all the women attack her. And all of the security tries to break them up, but the security gets killed. And Rhea's laughing at the on the outside, and Nia and Raquel keep beating each other up until finally Nia lays her out with the Samoan drop. It is a five-way at the pay-per-view. We had a segment where Tozawa wanted to face Bronson Reed to prove himself. Bronson says, listen, I'm a nice guy. The answer is no. And so Tozawa chopped him, and so Bronson said, well... It'll be your funeral. Vinci versus Gargano. Storyline is that uh, Vinci needs to have Gargano taken to the hospital tonight. But they go about five minutes. Kaiser jumps up on the apron. Ciampa returns, yanks him off the apron, beats him up. Gargano hits a distracted Vinci with one final beat, pins him. I do not think it looks good for Giovanni Vinci's chances here. Nakamura did a promo. He's looking for... Who is worthy to set him free? Logan Paul came out for a promo. He is burying this Dylan Dennis on every show. He won't mention his name, but he just buries him. He's so happy that he beat this guy and the guy got fired. So then out comes Dominic. They talk about how they're both going to be champions after the pay-per-view. Dom says he'll be the only Mysterio with a belt. And then Logan says, you know, we're on Raw. He's a free agent, he says. My, uh... My favorite announcer is here, Samantha Irvin. Can you please get in the ring so I can give you a heartfelt thank you? And she doesn't want to. And he goes, I'm serious. I want to thank you. I'm being real, he says. So she foolishly gets in the ring. And Logan says, I know I made it hard for you. I beat your fiance, Ricochet. You had to say my name is the winner. But you did a great job. You were a professional. So I want to thank you for that. Put you over. But what I'd like you to do now is announce me. As the new United States champion, a crown jewel preview. And she refuses to do it. He's pressuring her. And out comes Ricochet. Attacks both guys. Lays out Dominic. Goes for the shooting star. Logan pulls him to safety. So it is Dominic. He will be facing Ricochet next week on the show. Natty and Nikki Cross versus Piper and Chelsea non-title. I don't know what's going on. Like, you know... 85% of the WWE storylines are way better. And then there's that, like, this Nikki Cross thing. Nikki Cross comes out. She stands on the apron. She's a mannequin. The announcers say she's not even blinking. But they keep cutting to her and she is blinking. And then finally she just walks away. We never see her again. Natty gets double teamed and pinned. Drew met with Jay... Drew says, I can't imagine how it feels for the Judgment Day to cost you those tag titles. But you know what? Just get over it. He's still bitter. And he says, you know, if you weren't on Raw, this match with Sammy tonight would never have happened. So whatever does happen, it's on you tonight. 
We had Miz meeting with Adam Pierce, and then Rhea showed up and signed the contract, and they just move away from Miz. His gimmick is now just, he's a geek, which is fine. He plays a good geek. We had Drew versus Sammy, which was a very, very good match with a generic bad finish. They're doing all their stuff there at the end. Drew hits the kip up, goes for the Claymore. Rhea's music hits. Sammy almost pins him when he's distracted, but he kicks out. And then Rhea distracts Sammy. Drew hits the Claymore for the pin, which led to an angle later. Nick Aldis is trying to steal Katana and Caden, which, by the way, they should go. They don't do nothing on this show. But Pierce shows up. He's angry. Aldis says, you know, we were just having a friendly conversation, but listen, you've had a tough night. I can see where this is going. I'll just let myself out. And he leaves. Bronson killed Akira Tozawa. It was, in fact, his own funeral. Then Chad is telling Tozawa if he keeps training, he'd become a great wrestler. Gargano and Ciampa show up. The New Day is there. And they're all just trading wins back and forth, leading to, I'm sure, something likely at Survivor Series. Seth meets with Drew. He says, man, good job. Your first big win is a member of Judgment Day. And Drew says, well, what a paranoid pot calling the kettle black. Did you not see? Rhea distracted me. I almost got pinned. And he says, I saw you talking to her today. I didn't see you say no to her offer. And Seth says, I don't need them now or ever. So they both agree, no judgment day in their match at Crown Jewel. And Seth says, may the best man win. And Drew says, he will. Damian Priest and Jey Uso was the main event. And uh, same deal, good match, generic finish. Finn runs down, takes a ref, Jay punches him, hits Tope. Finn yanks Jay, balls first into the middle rope behind the ref's back. Priest hits South Ebb and gets the pin. So he goes for the coup de grace afterwards, hits it, and then he goes, get the double, get the chairs, they're going to concerto his leg. But Cody's music hits, and Cody hobbles down to the ring. He's got his, his giant cast on his leg, he's hobbling to the ring. And he takes out Finn. He chop blocks Priest. He's giving him a beating. He's going to pilmonize Priest's leg. But Balor yanks him to safety. So it looks like the story is going to be Damian Priest versus Cody coming up at the Crown Jewel show. And uh, Cody has got a bad wheel. So that's going to be the story. He's got to overcome the odds. And I thought the show was pretty good. Aside from, man, this, uh, these finishes on this show were... We're pretty lame. Hayes versus Dragunov. Yeah. This is going to be very, very short. Dragunov ha has his hair hanging over his eyes. That's what he got out of this match? <laughs> I gave that a 12 on the granny scale. Why? His hair was in his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about we get you a, a pen recorder for your birthday? Brian, I got one. Just nobody knows how to hook it up. So you don't have one. You have one that needs to be hooked up. It works as a pen, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll help you hook that up. <laughs> That's the biggest joke I ever heard. <laughs> you are the worst grandmother. Oh my God. <laughs> God. She just cackled at you. Is she drinking that? <laughs> no, she's putting her teeth in or something. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.